Join me today on Walk With History as we honor the Marines at Arlington National Cemetery and the United States Marine Corps Memorial. Hi, Jen of Walk With History, historian. I've worked in some museums, but mostly I see myself as a veteran, someone who served our country, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, as a Navy helicopter pilot. And when I'm here in Arlington, I'm always blown away by all these people who have given their lives, or willing to give their lives, to preserve our country and our freedom and our ideals. And I just want to always remember that and honor that. And for me, it's always a pleasure to come here and to tell their stories. Sergeant Ermey, and if we celebrate Marines, you cannot not stop at Gunnery Sergeant Ermey here in Arlington. He served in the U.S. Marine Corps as a staff sergeant, and then he was an advisor on Apocalypse Now. Kubarek was seeing how he was correcting the person they had hired to play the Marine Gunnery Sergeant, and in essence just hired him to do it. And then you really see the full essence of him in Full Metal Jacket. Private Powell, what are you trying to do to my beloved car? Sir, I don't know, sir. You are dumb, Private Powell, but do you expect me to believe that you don't know left from right? Sir, no, sir. Then you did that on yes. purpose. You and he's also to... nominated for Golden Globe for Full Metal Jacket. But my kids really appreciated him as Sarge in Toy Story. Sergeant, establish a recon post downstairs. Code red. You know what to do. Yes, sir. All right, men. You heard him. Code red. Repeat. We are at Code Red. Recon plan, Charlie. Execute. Let's move, move, move. He's here in Section 82 of Arlington. So if you can see behind me, Section 82 is probably like the farthest out section as they get to the end of the brick wall out here. So if you're going to visit Gunnery Sergeant Ermey, I suggest you do it first. Come into Arlington, make a right, and head all the way to the farthest end of Arlington that you can go to. And he's not far back. He's only five rows back in Section 82. But we cannot come here and celebrate Marines of Arlington without stopping at the Gunny. Thank you, Gunny. <laughs> it really is an honor to visit you. What a very unassuming grave for one of the men depicted raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Ira Hayes is the sixth man, the guy in the back pushing up the flag. He was in the Battle of Iwo Jima. He was a part of that campaign. But if you remember, of the six men, four will be killed. Two will come back to America and embark, Ira Hayes is one of them, and embark on a war bond selling campaign. It was really, really hard for him. And uh, he had a hard time with PTSD. And it wasn't long after the dedication of the Iwo Jima Memorial that he would succumb to alcohol poisoning and die. He's given full military honors here, buried in February of 1955. Before his death, he portrayed himself in the movie Santa Iwo Jima with John Wayne. First squad. Find something we can use for a standard, and we'll put this up. So he did want to tell the story. He did want to honor his fellow soldiers by telling the story. It was just too much for him, I think, with survivor guilt to keep going on afterwards. But it's an honor to be here with him. Uh, Johnny Cash wrote a song about Ira Hayes. Ira Hayes is an American Indian, so he's representing his country. 
There they battled up Iwo Jima's hill, 250 men, but only 27 lived to fight back down again. And when that fight was over, and when old glory raised, among the men to hold it high was the Indian, Ira Hayes. Hi, I'm here in Section 60, and I'm here with Major Megan McClung. Major Megan McClung is a 1995 graduate of the United States Naval Academy, and she has the distinction of being the first female Marine officer to be killed in Operation Iraqi Freedom. She's also the first female graduate of the United States Naval Academy to be killed in action. She was a public affairs officer, and her motto is here at the bottom, be bold, be brief, be gone. And I can't imagine anything else that en encompasses what a Marine would say to me than be gone. So I really feel like this is, em em embodies what a female Marine officer as uh, motto should be. You see here she has the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. But as we honor Marines here in Arlington National Cemetery, I'm in Section 60. And I always say Section 60 is one of the largest sections here. It's one of the more current sections here. And you're always going to see people here uh, visiting their loved ones. So this is the place if you're going to come uh, to Arlington and to honor more recent uh, heroes who are in current operations, it's Section 60. But today we honor Marine Corps Major Megan McClung. and Colonel in the United States Marine Corps, John Glenn. And John, it's such an honor to be here with John Glenn. When you think about even his portrayal in Hidden Figures, it doesn't even touch like who he really was. He's one of NASA's seven original Project Mercury astronauts, and he's the first American to orbit the Earth circling it three times with his Friendship 7 capsule on February 20th, 1962. He was a decorated fighter pilot, even says here, fighter pilot, astronaut, U.S. Senator. But since we're honoring Marines, I don't know if most people know John Glenn was a colonel in the Marine Corps. I, I probably the thing he was most proud about. <laughs> But it's just an honor to be here and to showcase him today because of everything that he did. He actually went back to space in 1988 on a nine-day space mission and he became at age 77 the oldest person to go into space. He dies in 2016 at age 95. But his honors include six distinguished flying crosses, the Air Medal with 18 clusters, the NASA Distinguished Service Medal, and the Congressional Space Medal of Honor. So what, as far as Marines go, it's pretty cool to, uh, to be sitting here with John Glenn. We're right by the Tomb of the Unknown, and he's a pretty uh, ununique grave, just like everybody else. And if you want to pay him a visit, we're honored to be here today with Walk With History. Honoring the Marines buried here at Arlington, we can't miss Pappy Boyington. Pappy Boyington was a combat pilot who was a Marine Corps fighter ace during World War II. And he received the Medal of Honor, the Navy Cross, and you would remember him for the Flying Tigers, but he also was the commander of the Black Sheep in 1943 and inspired that TV show, Ba Ba Black Sheep. All right. You've run out. Greg, just the man I wanted to see. General. Harry, I want you to meet Greg Boynton. He's going to lead the fighter sweeps against our ball. Greg, this is General Harrison Cantley from Washington. Happy to meet you, son. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I had a little accident. I'm sorry. Oh. Accident? 
Uh, the Major pulled one of his pilots out of a burning plane, sir, and saved his life. That ran in the 1970s for two seasons, but in January of 1944, he was outnumbered by Japanese Zeros and shot down. He was a prisoner of war for a year and a half. He was released shortly after the surrender of Japan. On January 3rd, 1944, uh, Pappy Boyington's beat World War I ace Eddie Rickenbacker's record of 21 enemy planes shot down. Uh, before Boynton was shot down, he confirmed kills of 28 enemy aircraft. 28 confirmed kills for Boynton. He's more than an ace. The Marine Corps honors its best. VMF 214, called the Black Sheep, and under the leadership of Major Pappy Boynton, has been named the best combat squadron in the Pacific Theater. With more air victories to its credit than any other squadron, the 214 will be considered a model unit for other squadrons to pattern after. When he's buried here, his friends will remark how close he is to Joe Lewis and how he would have loved to have seen a good fight from Joe Lewis. So if you see Joe Lewis is right behind him, so is Lee Marvin, another Marine, and then he's right not here in front. This is kind of along the walkway from the Tomb of the Unknown, so he's very easy to visit if you'd like to, to pay your respects here at Arlington National Cemetery. Please like and subscribe to the Walk With History YouTube channel if you want to see other Arlington videos or the Talk With History podcast. We go more in depth to those videos and how to visit here. If you like the content you see, if we've missed a grave or a grave you want us to focus on, please put it in the comments. also known as the Iwo Jima Memorial, is a national memorial. It was dedicated in 1954 to all Marines who had given their lives in defense of the United States. The memorial is inspired by the iconic 1954 photograph of six Marines raising a flag on top of Mount Suribachi in the Battle of Iwo Jima during World War II. Now, if you remember, there was two flag raisings. This depicts the second flag raising because it's still some of the same gentlemen and Ira Hayes, the man in the back, the sixth man, was in both. But one, the commander, as he came ashore, wanted the flag. Two, it was a small flag, and so they wanted to put a bigger flag up that you could see it from around the island. And they used a, a pipe, a plumbing pipe, to do it. They didn't have a flagpole available. The uh, memorial was approved by the United States Congress and commissioned in 1951. And then it was dedicated Wednesday, November 10th, 1954, on the 179th anniversary of the founding of the Marine Corps. And Ira Hayes was there for that dedication. But then John F. Kennedy, when he was president, issued a proclamation June 12th, 1961, that the flag of the United States should fly over the memorial 24 hours a day and it's one of the few official sites where that's required now when it was first depicted of course it's a flag of 48 states uh 48 stars were on that flag when the actual flag was raised over iwo jima now it's all 50 stars and that's done because the marines it's a perpetual memorial to what the marines defend today and today it's all 50 states in the Commonwealth of America. So you have a really good depiction here. What a beautiful flag. And again, I, it flies 24 hours a day. I think it's interesting. It says, in honor and memory of the men of the United States Marine Corps. It hasn't been corrected to say women. I think it's kind of cool that it hasn't been corrected. I always just consider, if you say men, it means women too. As I leave the Iwo Jima Memorial here at the top of this park that represents the United States Marine Corps, I am reminded of the two times I ran the Marine Corps Marathon. This is where the Marine Corps Marathon ends, right here, and it's uphill to get here. So if you know a marathon, it's 26.2 miles. But when you're running towards this at the end, it is so motivational that you don't feel that pain at the end. And I am proud to say that I did it twice 
and it is one of the greatest marathons you can do. The Marines come up and cheer for you the whole way. But I am proud to have been in the United States Navy and served alongside United States Marines. On to my next Walk with History.